All right. We want to thank everyone for joining us this evening, and we thank you. We love you all. We thank everyone in the YouTube land and the Facebook land and everywhere else. And we're going to open up with this prayer at this moment. We thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity, this time that you've allowed us to come together in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, for opening up our hearts and minds, receiving by love and by faith, applying to our lives and taking to a world that is good, holy, and beautiful. Bless over those that are less fortunate than self, the homeless, the sick, and shut in. Bless over those that are suffering that they suffer no longer. Bless over those who have lost loved ones that you comfort their heart. We thank you, Lord, for so many things in this opportunity in our name. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 All right, before we go further, praise reports, testimonies. Huh. How's everybody's body feeling on this day? Because I know I sent you guys, I know I sent you guys a strange text. But yeah. when I send you guys these type of texts, it's really to help you with your spiritual journey. It is not to go, oh, Pastor Meekins is crazy and cuckoo. But when we give you dates, um, it's important to listen to the dates because before, when we would often give dates, everybody wanted to label us as the prophet. And then everybody came and go, oh, what's my future? And it wasn't about that. It was about um, evolving yourself into the higher consciousness. So in the Bible, it goes from faith to faith. Faith is what you are believing in to manifest what you're desiring, which you would all call the keys to the kingdom. So you are technically the key. So when you hear me talk about the keys, say, I am the key. I am the key. Okay, so now we're clear about what the key is. The key is within you, because if we've always shifted you to every greater is he who is in within you, the keys have to be where? Within you. Mm -hmm. So everything else from this point on, you're going to go, okay, pastor, say me. I get it. <laughs> mm -hmm. That way it won't be a great mystery. That way you're not looking outward but you're looking inward. Does that make sense? Yes. So this day has been a very up and down day energetically. And I knew it was going to be a, a day like that because that is the releasing of the old and the creating of the new. Okay. It's kind of like a snake when it sheds its skin. As it continues to grow. In essence, you're this is a hypo, this is a, a metaphor, but your spirit is the same as you evolve and you grow and you expand. Does that make sense? Yes, Lily. Okay, so what happened uh since you sent us the message two two, three days ago? So mm -hmm. I I at least I prepare my family. Uh, and mm -hmm. I, um, I supposed to have a discussion with Melissa, but she was too busy. So <laughs> I, family is to <clears throat> how to set up today, this day, this special day. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it, it turned out pretty good, right? It turned out pretty good. When I look at it. So, so we, we were expecting snow because there was a false forecast of it might snow. Mm -hmm. And then so, so we were preparing, you know, I, I already meditated in the morning. So we were uh, telling Adrian how to use the Muse headband to, to do the <laughs> and then and then I was I was looking at him when he's starting to to know you know meddling with the phone and closing his eyes starting the meditation thing and mm -hmm. then he opened back his eyes he said you know somehow have to reset or something like that so I then pointed out to him look it's knowing the moment you start the meditation <laughs> <laughs> perfect timing isn't it yeah <laughs> isn't that fun yeah yeah. What was his score when he did his muse, if you don't uh, mind sharing? Pretty good. Uh, uh, like one... 60 over percent of calm, so, so it's kind of good. Uh, yeah. Because this is his, his first time kind of things. So just like a, a three-minute beginner's mm -hmm. type of first session kind of thing. And he got yeah. like one over minutes of, of calm, uh, six recoveries. Um, I don't know how many. Five birds. Five birds or something. Or, yeah. Or, or, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. And it... And what you're doing is a great, great gift to him, especially in today, in this time. And this is why we say, um, drink plenty of fluids and plenty of water because it helps move the energy through your body. Okay. Because what percentage of your body is water? Uh, 
Uh, 70%. 70%. Yeah. How much of the planet? 70%. So, so it kind of makes sense, right? To consume the water, even though if you're drinking water, more water than they'd expect it, not to the point where you make yourself sick, but to move the energies um, to help with this, this process, because it is a, a great level. It is a great shift. And people are feeling it. People are calling me, Pastor, I've been feeling tired. I've been sleepy. I've been hyper. I've been mm-hmm. everything. And we said, well, we told you. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, oh, and my uncle, they finally moved him out of intensive care into oh, a regular wow. room. <laughs> that was the that was the praise report today that we got for him so they are uh, they are astonished and they are pleased with the results because again um they had brought in someone to pray him out of here <laughs> yeah. some would call it a deathbed confession I mean, i'm like i don't know it could have been a, a prayer of healing it but the reason why I came to the conclusion that it was a deathbed confession is because of what they were confessing. Oh, he didn't do this. Or he didn't do that. He didn't take care of his body. Oh, he, he didn't want to do these types of things and so forth and so on. So then how in the world can you ask for healing when you're speaking like that? Yes. So my thing is, okay, give me, a, give me, you have to answer two questions. You either want me to pray him away or pray him, pray him here. Which one? Well, I still got one soup for two occasions. That matter. <laughs> one soup for two. <laughs> yeah, one to bury you, one to marry you. <laughs> Hello, Rufino. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> we appreciate you. <laughs> but does that make sense, though? Yes. So, as you begin to see the people, like even today, um, there was a testimony of someone showing compassion that had never shown compassion, and the person was like wow, pastor, I never thought this person would ever um, do this. And they did. And we said, you'll see a lot of things that you normally would not have seen. Mm -hmm. Not only just today, but as we progress, some will go unnoticed, but most will heal it. The biggest thing that we can tell physically that will happen into your bodies, well, for those who are consuming the animals or the meat, it will be very, 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 very difficult for them to digest the food. So it will be a gradual shift from them eating meat to becoming plant-based again. Because the original body, when we created it, was fruits and vegetables, plant-based. This was the natural order of how they lived to be 800 and 900 years old. Mm-hmm. This was like the longevity of life because they fought everything, everything was in balance and everything was in harmony. Mm-hmm. So when they talk about the Garden of Eden, it was the place of peace. It was a place of harmony. There was no, there was no labor. Everything was already provided for. It was the perfect environment. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's my praise report and testimony. Who else? <laughs> what? <laughs> we heard, we, somebody threw you under the bus. <laughs> There's music in the room. <laughs> Hallelujah. Which one? We have so many. <laughs> okay, share the share the best praise report that you have enjoyed today. So the angels are talking to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, I said, okay, uh, because they have not been talking to me since yesterday. So I said, hey, how come you're not talking to me these days uh, now? So he gave me numbers. Mm-hmm. He started giving me numbers again. And the numbers was uh, surprisingly, surpri- uh, I was surprised with the numbers. It was five, five, two, five. Uh, yep. No, five, four, five. Five four five. five four, yeah. yeah, five four five, mm-hmm. and then um, and then all other numbers. And my realization today was, today is twelve twenty one. Yes. Same. Now, 
interesting that we mentioned that day how long ago? Months. Mm -hmm. Months. And here we are with this date and everybody. I've gotten texts from people that I've normally have not gotten texts from ever asking mm -hmm. about this energy. And I'm going, it's funny that you call me. <laughs> what a blessing. So that is very, that is, that is, uh, that is a great testimony. Anyone else? No one? All right. <clears throat> okay. On page 733 of Master of Christ Consciousness, we're actually um, doing a spinoff of um, Keys to the Kingdom. In some of your holy scriptures in Matthew 16, 19, it says that there are keys to heaven and whatsoever you bind in heaven, you'll loose in heaven. And basically when you talk about these keys, you are the key. Mm -hmm. When the master Jesus, Yeshua gave keys to Peter, it wasn't for him to put up a building or a temple or a sanctuary. It was a consciousness. He was saying, Peter, you are the key. You are the key. Whatever you bind, whatever you loosen. But everybody took it and went the other way with it. <laughs> so when we talked about it um, yesterday in terms of what the keys were, we'll explain what the first keys are. Now, side note, <clears throat> you'll notice in parentheses, there are some words for those who are reading this on page 733. And you'll notice there, there's one that says expression slash spring. Now, when we talk about these keys, again, we're talking about dimensions. In my father's house, there are many mansions. The parable of that that Jesus was talking about was the dimensions. So here on this day, if you haven't noticed, anybody know, again, why today is a special day other than the 21st? Anyone know? Winter solstice. <laughs> Winter solstice. So... Also, if there's a winter solstice, then there has to be a spring, a fall, and an autumn. So now you have how many seasons? I mean, y'all don't know how many seasons we have? Four. Four seasons, right? So out of the four seasons, you'll kind of understand the four keys and how it, how it relates from the spirit into what you're experiencing now. In my father's house, there are many mansions and all the Christians decide to put up houses in heaven. And we went, that's not what he meant. It was a consciousness. So we'll get more in depth on the expression and the spring, but you'll kind of see it as we read the material. Does that make sense? Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. Because Honestly, I don't want to get too in depth and really confuse you because we're talking about creation. And if you don't understand the whole process of how it was, then one, you'll be lost, two, it won't serve you. So everything that we teach here, we want to serve you. <laughs> so we I, I know, uh, <laughs> Pastor, this may be confusing for some people, okay? But we, I think we have already uh, have the uh, basic foundation where, where we come from. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, so-called the Chinese, we learn it in a book of Chen Zhong. I read that book. Uh, Matter of fact, I wrote it. You're welcome. Wrote it. <laughs> so we, 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 we already know. Uh, yeah, we know. But this is the thing. Uh, we know, but we all, I, I only aware that the, this is a creation and this is part of the universe, okay? Mm -hmm. But we do not know what is the implication of it. Well, and this is why I came to help you all remember. If you ever read the, the, the material, which I know you have, when we refer to you, it's always referring to you one as God. It's always referring to you as the highest state that you are. It's always putting you equal with God. It's always showing you your greatest ability, your greatest potential. It is also teaching you how to manifest, but it's also to help you remember who you are. Everyone who came here forgot who they were. 
So now it's the let remember who I am. Jesus came to help people remember who they are. Mm. He would all, and when, when challenged, he would say, well, I'm the son of God. Then they would say, oh, blast me. And he'd go, wait a minute. Is it not written? You all are children of the most high God. And they had, go, yeah, if you want to be technical and they had to walk away because he would always outsmart them. Does that make sense? So when he began to teach about the keys and remember we we started off with this whole series about what desire so it would only be fitting that the first key be what desire desire <laughs> because everybody wants to desire god everybody is seeking god in their own way whether whether you agree with it or disagree with it they're seeking in their own way even the ones who proclaim i'm an atheist i believe in no god are still seeking something bigger than themselves yes, <laughs> yes. and they soon find out quickly everything's within not out greater is he who is what within me than he who is in the world where is god he is within me so now i have to desire god first in order to have access to the kingdom i have to one desire god two i have to acknowledge my citizenship as who god he is god i am a child of god we now when we say this god is not a respecter of people he reigns on the just as well as unjust and what that means is he doesn't care if you put the big g or little g because at the end of the day we all have wisdom that we did not create ourselves we know someone created us that's why we were given names we were given date of births we were given times events but when you talk about the infinite god the father the abba Jehovah, whatever name you want to give him, Allah, Buddha, whatever name you want to give him, Matria, it doesn't matter. He meant by many names, same God. But when you talked about this one God, he was always within you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that desire had to be one first of God and then two acknowledgement that you are the child of God. And then three, that you are a kingdom citizen. And as that, you have privileges to the kingdom. But when you understand the kingdom, there are rules to the kingdom. And I don't know if you guys remember, but we introduced it to you very subtle, and we gave you the seven hermetic laws. Do you all remember that? Mm -hmm. As above, as beneath, when we gave you that teaching? That was part of the key to help you in terms of the desire, to help you understand and remember who you are. Does that, help, that answer your question, Melissa? I know I kind of went left with it, but that's the that's the long story short. <laughs> All right. All right. The first key is desire. Expression in spring. Again, I must I will I will send a separate email for you guys about this. Um I'll say this on record. When I, when I write this from the Holy Spirit, I do it from, there's a little thing on the Word document that helps uh, voice record. So sometimes it doesn't pick up all the words. So I have to come in and do this and clean it up. So when you see guys, the, the grammatical errors and stuff like that, that's me trying to clean it up. But it's really me getting it straight from the Holy Spirit and putting it on paper. So if I send it to you that way, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really not pretty to look at but there's a lot of information in it if you want me to clean it up you'd have to give me some time to um, find the words to express what we're trying to say so you'll have an understanding of what we're meaning in this okay yes so first desire is everything without it nothing not a thing can arise therefore what you desire is of uttermost importance desire then is perfect union with god Desire then to be Christ incarnate. Desire then to be all that your creator has created you to be. Even if you have no idea what that might be. Because I'm often asked that. And we said, who cares? 
try your best at whatever is working for you that is not harming others, do that. For when you hold desire within your beingness, and when you have mastered the energy of desire again, mastery does not mean control by grounded always in the desire to be as you control as you are created to be. Then indeed all of your life, all of your life and all of your all of the subsequent of subsidiary desires will come to serve that grand desire. So when we talk about the desire, we're also talking about the heart. What is your heart's desire? Because that's really where this is going to be created along with your emotional guidance scale, along with what do I want? Why do I want it along with satisfying, not satisfying? Do y'all see how everything connects? Mm -hmm. No, no, it's okay. Yes. Somebody had a question or no? Okay. Can someone read the next one? When you come to the state you of being. Hold, oh, when you come into that state of being, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Why? Mm. Because you are not the one doing it. You are merely ah. a piece of trap in a very cosmic tapestry being woven by the creator of all of creation, who alone knows how to weave the tapestry of a new age, mm -hmm. of a new paradigm, of a healing of this plane and of humanity and this is why today is an important day because this is a new paradigm of healing that is coming into this existence right now okay thank you for that so the first stage of desire only by feeling desire and not by suppressing it can you truly begin to move toward the stage of mastery in which the energy of desire always serves that higher will which is the will of God for you. As we have said to you before, when, you're, when your will is in alignment with the will of God, you will discover that God's will for you is that you be genuinely happy through and through, content, fulfilled, at peace, empowered, capable, and responsible. All right, second key. We're, gonna, we're only gonna do two keys tonight. There's four keys. And then the other two keys we'll do next Sunday, next Monday. If not, we'll be here quite a long time. And I, I don't want y'all mad at me. <laughs> I want y'all to continue to be my friends. <laughs> All right. So now we come to the second key, which is intention. And you've often heard us talk about intention. So if you really follow how the keys are constructed, you have desire first. So now desire comes in. Now I desire water. So now what do you have to do? I have to get the intention to pull myself up out of the seat to go get what? Water. Does that make sense? Yes. So this is where the experimentation slash summer comes in that we'll explain when we send that, that email out. Okay. So when you talk about your winter solace and your new moons in these phases, these are also part of the keys. This is the perfect alignment of God. This is the grandest of the creation. You are the grandest of the creation. Okay. Uh, can someone read that one, 734? Desire in time is cultivated through intention. Mm -hmm. For you have used time to teach yourself how to be distracted by all of the thoughts and perceptions <laughs> They make up this cosmic soup called your world. <laughs> <laughs> All of you have known the frustration of having a desire. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you walk out the door, a friend pulls up and says, let's go to the beach. Mm -hmm. And you never make it to class, even though you, your desire is to get, to, uh, to get a degree. You <laughs> have cultivated the art of being seduced by distraction. Yep. Mm -hmm. Everybody who's guilty, we're all guilty, are we not? Yeah. Everybody's guilty of that. But it is, it's when those <laughs> things get distract you 
And that's what happens. So in other words, the reason why let's go to the beach happens is because one, even though you say I wanted to get a degree, you go, oh my gosh, I got to go study. I got to put in long hours. I got to go do this research. I got to do this analysis. I got all these things. And then when beach comes up, wow, no resistance because there's no studying, there's no professor, there's no test, there's nothing. There's no paper, there's no APA format, none of that thing. Beach is relaxing. But now, you can't get a degree from the beach. Yes. So, therefore, it is necessary to utilize time to cultivate intention. And you'll always hear us say time and space because time and space always go together like loving wisdom. So it is very, very, very important for people not to use the words, I'm bored. When you use the words, I'm bored, you're not utilizing your time constructively. So now, in essence, you're wasting time. And then what happens is when people get on a deathbed, they wish for that time back. Oh, I wish I would have did this. Or I wish I would have done that. Wish I'd have said I'm sorry. Wish I'd have, wish I wish I wish I wish I wish I, and then they croak. <laughs> uh, therefore, it is necessary to utilize time constructively for intention. For without intention, for without intention, desire cannot become the crystal clear focus, the laser like focus that can cut through the dross of this world so that a new creation can flow forth through you. That way you don't get caught up in the drama. You don't get caught up at um, Palm Spring being an issue. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing, Alyssa. <laughs> we'll use us next time. <laughs> we'll, we'll dig deep and find one that this one has used. <laughs> But that was the first, but this is the one that we had the most fun with was the Palm Spring. We enjoyed, we'll be honest, we enjoyed Palm Spring. We love Palm Spring. Each time you went low, we went high. We poured it on even thicker because we know how strong and powerful you are. Because we know that as soon as you set your attention, like this laser, like focus that we're talking about, you cut through that thing and now Palm Spring gets sold. Now other avenues and doors open because now you're understanding the key because you have the intention. First, you have the desire. You remember we told you the story about the difference between faith and belief with a man who was starving and he went in and he said, I believe. And they brought in the food, but he never ate the food, even though he said believe. Well, this is the same thing. People say it all the time. I want, I want more money. I want more money. But then they go and say how broke they really are. Oh, I'm poor. I'm poor. I'm poor. There's not enough. Oh, my boss doesn't pay me. Oh, he took the raise over me and I'm a better manager. All these things. Intention is not the same as holding a strong, egoic, or willed commitment to making something happen. That is the difference between the wealthy and the poor. The wealthy are not afraid to take risk. The wealthy will not take no for an answer. Or the wealthy will not look at whatever they're trying to do as failure. They'll look at it as, okay, that didn't work. Let me try something different. Oh, that didn't work. Let me try something different until something works. Mm -hmm. If you listen to the top billionaires and millionaires that walk this planet, and even the ones that are not known to you, they will all tell you the exact same thing. They never took outside advice on a no, or you can't do it, or it's impossible, or it's too big. Couldn't happen. So as we move on. For the way of the heart recognizes that you have not known how to achieve the fulfillment you seek at the level of the soul. For the simple reason that if you did, you would have already accomplished it. We wouldn't have to do this teaching. <laughs> you, have, you, have, you would have already came to all the answers that you had already asked on your own. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, Intention does not mean putting your nose to the grindstone and not taking no for an answer. 
Rather, it means that you cultivate within your thought process the art of remembering what you are truly here for. This is why we always emphasize who you are. And some of you, we have given your true names to and you have ran with it. Some of you have discovered it on your own. You are here to remember that you are the thought in love in form. There's your answer, Melissa. Mm -hmm. This is why you're here. So now when you ask, what is my life pur what is my life purpose, Pastor? Why did God send me here? Why was I put in this woman's body? Why was I put in the black male body? What was I put in the, this this disabled or crippled body or this shortened stature body or this heavy set, whatever? Because you are the thought of love in form. You are to hear to remember that you are what? One with God. Boy, y'all don't sound excited. Gee whiz. <laughs> y'all should be jumping through the roof. All right. You're here to remember that what I have called Abba, which is the father, that did you call God, that goes by many, 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 many names is the source of your only reality. You are living in reality only to the degree that the one is living through you. This is why we always praise greater is he who is in you than he's in the world. Therefore, intention in the way of the heart means to utilize time each day to focus your attention on the desire to be Christ incarnate. Intention is that energy or that use of the mind that creates through consistent practice the channel through which desire begins to move down and re-educate the emotional body. This is where you start breaking old habits and start creating new habits to serve you on what you're trying to manifest and what you're praying for. Uh, and re-educate the emotional body and even the cellular structure of the physical body and all the lesser avenues of thinking that occurs within the intellect. So everything involved in your being is integrated, working together and focused on fulfillment of that one grand des desire to accept your function in this world. So many of you, when I first met you, said, oh, pastor, I don't ever want to come back here. I don't ever want to reincarnate again. <laughs> <laughs> we won't name names. <laughs> but now that you know why you're here, it's not so bad being here because you've been here so many times. You just forgot. Your function is healing your sense of separation from God. Your function is healing your sense of separation from God. How do you imply this intention? I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. Each day, just if you have used time to teach yourself to be easily distracted, you need only ask yourself one question daily. What is it that I most desire? What am I doing on this planet? Mm. What am I committed to? Mm -hmm. The last two questions are just forms of a fundamental question. As you keep practicing asking that question, the answer will become clearer and clearer. For it is the question that influences, stimulates, and gives birth to the answer. The universe is always answering your questions. And when you ask unclear questions, you get unclear answers. Mm -hmm. yep. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. Because when you read in your Bible, it is written, God is not the author of confusion. So when there is confusion, that means you are out of alignment with God. Mm -hmm. If you're out of alignment with God, that means you're out of alignment with everything else, including yourself. Therefore, become crystal clear with your intention and remind yourself of it daily. This is what I want. This is what I, why I'm on this planet. What am I committed to? We're taking you above those simple questions to get more specific and this will help you understand. My intention is to use time constructively for the relearning of what it means to abide in the kingdom of heaven and to fulfill my function. My function is healing, and healing requires the presence of Christ, for only Christ can express love that brings healing into being. Desire and intention are critical. These stages unfold in the field of time as one matures in the way of the heart. So, We'll stop right there, and next one we'll do um, the third and the fourth key Sunday and Monday. 
God permitting. So, questions, comments, concerns? Okay, question, Pastor. Yes. Now, um, you see that paragraph says that how do you apply intention? Yes. Right? Each day, just as you have time, use time to teach yourself to be easily distracted. I mean, we have to unlearn that when you have a peaceful mind, when you have um, a calm mind, you will not be distracted. Well, remember we told you to sit as five minutes yeah. as the Christ. When we mean by sitting five minutes as the Christ, we want you to literally, we'll even give you this example, be the Buddha, be the Christ, be Allah, be Krishna, be whatever you want to call God. We want you to have an intimate relationship with God, period. God is love. So when you apply it each day, you're, when, when Sudi meditates and he's quieting the mind and not thinking about the school or whatever else is going on, he is really, in sense, not directly asking these chords exactly, but in sense, in the vibration, he's asking that question. What do I desire in this moment that I don't have to think about the school? This is a time that I've purposely set aside to what? Quiet the mind. So what do I want and why do I want it while I'm sitting here so I'm not wasting time where I get up and go, oh, that was pointless. That fan was just rattling and disturbed my peace or that faucet or that child or that dog or that siren or whatever. And then people come up with every excuse on why they can't sit for five minutes and quiet the noise. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when you practice, yes, Sudi. So pastor, does that mean that um because some people, if, if, if they need to be like at a place that is 100% quiet before they can calm down. But that is not true, right? You, you, should, you should be able to be quiet and be able to meditate no matter the surrounding, right? Y'all do it all the time. How many of you have heard sirens pass by your place while you were working? Yeah. Did you stop working just to go out and... <laughs> <laughs> no. Go outside and shout, hey. <laughs> right. Unless, unless the building was on fire and the fireman was running in to get you out or something like that, or the ambulance was coming to, to get someone to take them to the emergency room. Look how many times you get distracted. Matter of fact, within this five minutes, every last one of you were distracted. Mm -hmm. Yes. Every last one of you drifted off, and I seen where each one of you went to. <laughs> And it's not that we're boring, it's because you have free spirit and the, the spirit is free to leave the body anytime it wants. That's why you have free will. This is why people drive up to the, the stop sign and they think that they're tired and they doze off. It's not because they're tired. It's hard for the spirit to be in this body because this is a dense planet. Everything on this planet is heavy. So notice when you meditate, do you not feel lighter when you finish meditating? Mm -hmm. Yeah, your, your mind is much clearer. Even your body feels lighter and clearer. That's because you've released everything. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So as you practice intentionally for five minutes, even 10, even 15, <clears throat> quiet the mind. When you go out into the world, you're just more conscious of it. Vice the people who don't sit and meditate or learn to not get distracted because there'll be a siren and everybody will run to the window. <laughs> See where the siren is going. How many of you have been on the freeway and there's an accident on the freeway and everything's backed up and then your side is backed up too and there's no accident? Yeah. Why? Because all the rubber naked. Everybody wants to see. Everybody wants to see. We call them nosy. Curious mind. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna I ain't gonna name no names, but Galaxy J7V. <laughs> <laughs> boy, that 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 person there, boy, that person. Woo! <laughs> if something happening outside that window, he's going to go see. <laughs> so, pa so pastor uh when it, the answer to this question is what am i doing on this planet 
mm -hmm. actually is uh like we have already know that is love right love and form so, I, i'm here in love and form that's why i'm here yeah mm -hmm. and what am i committed to now that's a great question what are you committed to because your commitment changes second to second moment to moment and we could go on it really does mm -hmm. so now the real question is what am i going to deliberately and intentionally be committed to to create from that desire does that make sense am i okay in other words here's a great one how many of you want more money so what is the commitment to get more money every last one of you will come up with your own unique ways of bringing that income to you right Mm -hmm. that's what it's about so what are you committed to because now what happens when you get the 11.5 million dollars now what else, what are you going to focus on next what are you committed to next it'll be something else it'll be something else and something else and something else and something else mm -hmm. but we want you to be very laser focused on what you're committed to because this too shall pass away it'll be rust Matter of fact, as soon as you pray for whatever you're asking for and you get it, let's say I want new glasses and new glasses come. As soon as you get new glasses, these are old, even though you have never put them on your face first. That's how fast your commitments change. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, you can only see your lips. The, the commitment has to be in alignment with love, right? And your love has to be in line with what? Desire. So you have to have desire. And then from that, the intention drives that desire. So now you're committed to what that intention is. I intentionally want to sell Palm Spring. So now you are committed to that. And now once it's gone, now you're committed to, I want a new home or I want another car. I want more money or whatever. Mm. So now you're clear about why you're here because you're love informed. So now you can, you can get rid of the, what is my life purpose question? Throw it out. What you created to be. Ha! created to be another creator hello <laughs> good holy beautiful mm. you are love informed if you're created in the image and the likeness of the father god is love and you're created in that image then you are love informed so now everywhere you're going to go you're going to create more love but now we're making you more conscious of it that's why for the past however long y'all have been with this teaching we have pushed nothing but what unconditional love we have never, ever, 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 and nor will we ever waver from that because love is all there is. And once you recognize and remember why you're sent here, because I'm love informed and I'm here to what? Heal. Look how many people you have healed just by your presence alone. Yes. Just with the laying of the hands, just with the smile, just with the words, just with the sending them of love in the spirit that you didn't even think was possible, that they don't even teach in your other doctrines or dogmas, but then you come to find out, wow, that really works. Mm -hmm. And not only works, works effectively because now the Holy Spirit is involved because now there's that alignment, because now you're clear about what your desire is. So now there's the intention. Does that make sense? So now what am I committed to in my what? Now, now faith is that substance of the things that I am hoping for. Where am I at now in my commitment? Am I committed to love? Well, if so, how much unconditional love could I receive in this moment? Wow. How much of this five foot three African male body feel with love? How can I commit to that much love? I can start my day by in God, with God, for God, shifting my thinking to that thought. 
And then not only that, acting it out. How does God have compassion toward one who's suffering? How does God have one who is loving when they're abusing me? Because I've learned there's no abuse. Does that help you with your answer? Yes, no, maybe so. Yes. Comments? Melissa, that help you? Yeah, yeah. All right. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Mm, no, we're all good. good. We're all good. All right. So get ready for the next key. Woo <laughs> also, for the next three days, if, you, if you're able, for the next three days, I know we said today, but let this energy that is here today, give it three days to process. Continue drinking your water. Continue sending love. Continue to stay in the highest vibration that you could possibly be because this is a great time for the earth to go into the great leveler and you'll hear many people and you might not call it by different names some call it the shift some call it the awakening some call it um the second coming and all these things but whatever you want to call it it is a great time for humanity because it's a great time for awakening of love where there will be no more separation there will be no more suffering there will be no more um of those things it'll be the shedding so this is why we're excited all right so thank you all anybody want to pray us out don't everybody raise their hand at once <laughs> i got a great idea a great idea i know how about all of us pray simultaneously out loud together and it doesn't matter if we're in sync or not, because God hears all the prayers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I mean, Pastor. Yes. Pastor, let's all pray for that lady, uh, oh, Jackie. Yeah. Everybody, in, in your own prayers as we pray out, and whoever says amen last, or whoever says amen last, that's when we'll finish. But I want everybody to include Jackie. Jackie. Because Jackie is going through some issues with the lungs and in the body, but we don't need to get into the technical details. But right now, we're all going to agree to send Jackie love, and we're going to show the world how God moves in healing. Mm -hmm. All right? So okay. on the count of three, everybody take their, their mutes off. Everybody unmute their, their thing, if you, if you don't mind. If you don't mind. You don't have to. If you want to pray silently. We won't hear you, so if you don't unmute, we'll sit here until you get on. <laughs> We're just kidding. All right. So on the count of three, we're all going to pray out loud. One, two, three. Thank you, Father, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Bless all of y'all. Thank you, Jackie. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the Father. We thank you for Sudi. We thank you for Lily. We thank you for Anson. We thank you for Adrian. We thank, thank, you, for we thank you for Stanley. We thank you for Dean. We thank you for all the health and prosperity and abundance. Thank you, we thank you for this time. We want to thank you for everything. We thank you for those who thank you on Instagram and throughout the social medias that they will open up their hearts and minds to you by love and by faith. And we thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. Thank you, so thank you. So thank thank you, you for life. Thank, thank you for this day. Health and healing in our bodies. And we thank you for those things in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Bless Jackie. Bless all the sick. Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 How'd y'all like it? Wasn't that fun? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? I know it was kind of, I know it kind of freaked y'all out, but it was fun though, because you hear everybody's thing because we were just talking about the distraction. So what did we just do? We showed you how not to be distracted in this group Zoom setting while we all prayed. And we got you all out of the box where all of you have finally prayed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we tricked you all. <laughs> no, Pastor. Yes. In the end, I just follow you whatever you say. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. It, it worked though. But isn't that fun though? Yes. <laughs> Never had been done, but we've done it today. And this will be the trend because man, this is what it means to come together when two or three are gathered in his name. Man, we're supposed to have fun with this. All right. We love you all. Great prayer. 
and have a great week deliberately creating. Bless everyone, love everyone, and especially love yourselves above all. Yes. Have a great evening, you all. And thank you again for getting on. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.